good evening everybody uh, today is the 11th day of our one month basic oncology and chemotherapy 30 days course so in today's lecture let us try to understand about non hodgkins lymphoma or hodgkins lymphoma non hodgkins lymphoma so most of the medical students and the pharmacy graduates clinical pharmacist will will be facing a lot of issues with non hodgkins lymphoma because non hodgkins lymphoma is very confusing topic and it has so many types so in today's lecture so allow me to explain all difficult concepts of non hodgkins lymphoma and uh, i would be dealing with all concepts okay anyways chalo so yes in previous classes we have already discussed about leukemias in leukemia we have four different types four types of leukemias and in that the first type of leukemia is acute myeloid leukemia and second type is chronic myeloid leukemia and third type is acute lymphoid leukemia and fourth one is chronic lymphoid leukemia so these four types of leukemias we have already discussed in previous classes and we have already started lymphomas lymphoma so in lymphoma we have two types in that the first one is hodgkins lymphoma and non hodgkins non hodgkins lymphoma lymphoma okay so we have two types of lymphomas in that hodgkins lymphoma and non hodgkins lymphoma in previous class already we have discussed about hodgkins lymphoma in hodgkins lymphoma already i explained you the important clinical features hodgkins lymphoma hodgkins lymphoma is mainly characterized by red stenberg cells okay rs cells in short about this we have already discussed the rs cells are specialized macro cells which are having binucleate they are having two nuclei two nucleus and in the nucleus they are having a dense nucleoli okay it is a typical clinical feature for hodgkins lymphoma so this is a red stenberg cell and along with this hodgkins lymphoma is mainly categorized into two types one is classical and non classical non classical about this hodgkins lymphoma we have already discussed in previous classes and in today's class let us try to discuss about non hodgkins lymphoma and remember the main difference between hodgkins lymphoma and non hodgkins lymphoma is in non hodgkins lymphoma there is no presence of red stenberg cells so red stenberg cells are not present in hodgkins lymphoma this is the main clinical difference you have to remember now let's begin with non hodgkins lymphoma non hodgkins lymphoma if you see the definition see in previous classes what we have discussed to to make, to make you understand about the definitions is simply i'll tell you non hodgkins lymphoma is it is a just cancer of cancer of t and b lymphocytes it is the cancer of t and b lymphocytes see in previous classes i already discussed just imagine this is a bone marrow bone marrow is having stem cells stem cells will produce myeloblast myeloblast cells and it will also produce lymphoblast lymphoblast cells okay this myeloblast cells will further activate further mature into either neutrophils eosinophils or basophils which are granulocytes and this lymphoblast will further mature into lymphocytes lymphocytes and in lymphocytes again it will differentiate either into b lymphocyte or t lymphocyte b lymphocyte or t lymphocyte sometimes the b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes they proliferate themselves and they cause they cause tumors this t and b lymphocytes will enter into particularly into lymph nodes lymph nodes and in lymph nodes this b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes will accumulate in the lymph nodes with that it will cause lymphoma lymphoma actually in hodgkins lymphoma particularly b lymphocytes are seen and here in non hodgkins lymphoma both t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes are seen it is just a cancer of either t lymphocytes or b lymphocytes i think everybody are following me simple non hodgkins non hodgkins means these type of lymphomas are not having red stenberg cells they are not having red stenberg cells and lymphoma lympho means lymph node lymph node and oma means cancer cancer so it is the cancer of cancer of t and b cells where t and b cells will go and accumulate in the lymph nodes with that it will cause cancer in the lymph nodes it is not only the cancer is not only seen in lymph nodes in non hodgkins lymphoma it can also be seen in other tissues 
but primarily it is seen in lymph nodes from the lymph nodes it can also proliferate or it can also infiltrate into different tissues like it can enter into spleen it can enter into a liver it can it can infiltrate into gi tract in the stomach in the skin also it can go in it can cause lymphomas skin lymphomas also can be seen so non hodgkins lymphoma is the cancer of t and b lymphocytes okay so this is very important point about non hodgkins lymphoma i think everybody are following me so in non hodgkins lymphoma if you see some clinical features mainly this non hodgkins lymphoma is seen in men because the prevalence rate and the uh, risk is main mainly seen in men okay in male populations it is very commonly seen and if you see the age actually this non hodgkins lymphoma is seen in elder populations but it can also be seen in younger population younger younger population also it can be seen but prevalence is less in younger populations as age increases as age increases non hodgkins lymphoma risk increases as age increases it can increase the risk of getting this non hodgkins lymphoma this is important point we have to remember now if we see the pathogenesis pathogenesis of non hodgkins lymphoma see i told one point uh just it is it is a cancer of either t or b lymphocytes right see again if you see the bone marrow just imagine this is a bone marrow from the bone marrow the stem cell the stem cell is proliferating into lymphoblast lymphoblast this lymphoblast further proliferates into lymphocytes lymphocytes this lymphocyte further proliferates either into t lymphocytes or b lymphocytes t lymphocytes will further cause uh, cell mediated immunity okay cell mediated immunity and this b b cell b lymphocytes will again transform into plasma cell plasma cell and this plasma cell further produces antibodies antibodies so this is the general method general physiology of developing from the stem cell to the different cells this is different maturing steps but here what happens the lymphocytes will have certain mutation lymphocyte will have mutation or t or b lymphocytes will have mutation and these lymphocytes mutated lymphocytes actually when lymphocyte is having mutation if lymphocyte is having mutation it should either die or it should either cause dna uh, repair okay whenever cells have mutations they should repair themselves or they should undergo apoptosis but here the lymphocytes will neither die nor they repair their dna in that case what happens they will increase their proliferation they develop rapidly okay sometimes t cell rapid development can be seen sometimes b cell rapid development can be seen and the excess development of either t cells and b cells due to the mutation in the lymphocytes is called is called non hodgkins lymphoma this one just now we have seen here in previous classes what we have discussed if there is no mutation in the lymphocyte this lymphocyte will either proliferate into b cells b cell again proliferates into plasma cell and this plasma cells will produce antibodies this we have seen sometimes if plasma cell mutation occurs if if mutation occurs in the plasma cell this plasma cell will start dividing rapidly and this type of cancer is called multiple myeloma this one already we have discussed these are some basic things we need to understand so in pathogenesis what happens when lymphocyte mutation occurs it will it will start developing t cells or b cells here if t cell development increases or b cell development increases they will lead to lymphoma and this development is not seen in blood they are particularly seen in certain tissues okay particularly they are seen in tissues and this development is seen mainly in uh, lymph nodes they are seen in lymph nodes very very important point t cells and b cell proliferation is seen in lymph nodes okay that is the normal physiology of development of this t and b lymphocytes and they will accumulate in the lymphocytes and that will cause non hodgkins lymphoma and other than lymphocytes they also goes to other tissues okay and they accumulate there they that condition is called extra nodal lymphoma extra nodal lymphoma if if the uh, accumulation is seen in lymph nodes that will cause lymphodal or uh, lymphodal lymphoma and if it is going to the other tissues it will cause extra nodal lymphoma and here in extra nodal lymphoma it can uh, infiltrate into skin tissue it can infiltrate into gi tract and it is it, it will damage gi tract it can infiltrate into spleen mainly it is causing into gi tract 
it can also go to liver it can enter into bone marrow okay bone marrow so all this it can infiltrate into any tissue wherever these t cells and b cells goes and accumulates there it will increase the size of that particular tissue okay so i think you all are following me now let us see the risk factors risk factors of non hodgkins lymphoma if we see the risk factors mainly main risk factor for this non hodgkins lymphoma is immunosuppression immunosuppression if patient is taking immunosuppressant drugs or if patient is taking cytotoxic drugs or if patient is having uh, organ transplantation bone marrow transplantation or in all these conditions due to immunosuppression patient may develop non hodgkins lymphoma this is one risk factor and very important risk factor is patient with epstein barr virus epstein barr virus is another very important risk because most of the lymphomas non hodgkins lymphomas are associated with epstein barr virus and sometimes hiv also patients who are having hiv and there is very very important virus which is called human t cell lymphocytotrophic human t cell lymphocytotrophic virus it's called htlv human t cell lymphocytotrophic virus human t cell lymphocytotrophic virus htlv is another risk factor of getting non hodgkins lymphoma very important and sometimes non hodgkins lymphoma is also associated with h pylori infection h pylori infection h pylori infection is mainly associated with gastric ulcers peptic ulcers okay gastric ulcers so this h pylori infection also leads to cancer and that may lead to non hodgkins lymphoma because many cases are having this uh, evidences that's why they are associated with non hodgkins lymphoma and along with this so many other causes are also there and these are main risk factors for getting non hodgkins lymphoma now let us try to understand the classification very very important if you see the classification according to who there are so many types more than 20 types of hodgkins non hodgkins lymphoma are classified but let me explain you the common types and the uh, well studied types of non hodgkins lymphoma see one thing we already know that non hodgkins lymphoma can be seen in both t cells and b cells okay t cell non hodgkins lymphoma can be seen cancer of t cells also can be seen and cancer of b cells also can be seen so usually in non hodgkins lymphoma 80% of cases are seen with b cell proliferation and uh, 15 to 20% 15% of cases are seen with t cell uh, lymphomas okay this is one important point we have to remember now based on the rate of growth based on the rate of growth of either t cells and b cells based on the rate of growth based on the rate of growth of these cells t cells and b cells actually it is mainly categorized into three types it is categorized into three types in that the first type is it is indolent indolent type of lymphoma indolent type of lymphoma this indolent type of lymphomas are very slowly developing okay they develop very slowly they this type of lymphomas are also called as lazy lymphomas okay and the other name for this indolent type of lymphomas uh, are low grade low grade lymphomas okay you have to remember this name indolent type of uh, lymphomas are very slowly growing okay and second type of lymphomas based on the rate of growth is aggressive 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 lymphomas these aggressive lymphomas will grow rapidly okay and third one is very aggressive very aggressive aggressive here the growth of t cells and b cells is very rapid very very rapid okay and aggressive and very aggressive this type of lymphomas are very sensitive to chemotherapy okay because chemotherapies like uh, we have alkylating agents we have uh, pink alkaloids and many other drugs they will act especially on the dividing rapidly dividing cells that's why those which are aggressive and very aggressive in that they are very sensitive for chemotherapy so chemotherapy has good uh, efficacy on these aggressive and very aggressive type of classified lymphomas and this aggressive and very aggressive type of lymphomas are also called as high grade or intermediate high grade high grade lymphomas low grade lymphomas are indolent lymphomas high grade lymphomas are aggressive and very aggressive lymphomas okay so this is the classification based on the rate of growth now let us see the classification based on morphology so classification based on morphology this is very very important i will i will try to explain you certain types in that the first type of non hodgkins lymphoma is 
डिफ्यूज डिफ्यूज लार्ज बी सेल लार्ज बी सेल लिम्फोमा डिफ्यूज लार्ज बी सेल लिम्फोमा दिस टाइप ऑफ लिम्फोमास और दे आर हैविंग प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ डिफ्यूजिंग टू अदर टिश्यूज दैन फ्रॉम द लिम्फ नोट्स from lymph nodes they are having high probability to diffuse to the other tissues okay they have high proliferating nature and infiltrating nature number 1 next this diffuse large b cell type of lymphomas are highly aggressive aggressive they are aggressive aggressive means they are having high dividing ability and these are very very common these are very common diffuse large b cell lymphomas are very common okay and see this type of lymphomas diffuse large b cell lymphomas they are seen mainly in older population older population okay and if you see the uh, other clinical features for this this diffuse large b cell lymphomas are having clinical presentations like fever they are having night sweats and severe weight loss can be seen so these are important clinical features that are seen with the diffuse large b cell lymphoma this is first type and second type second type of lymphomas or follicular follicular lymphomas follicular lymphoma in follicular lymphoma if you see the translocation of 14th 14th chromosome to the 18th chromosome is translocated and with that it causes mutation and it increases the division of t cells and b cells here both in follicular lymphoma both the cells can be seen okay and here in follicular lymphoma mainly they occupy a follicular region follicular region in the lymph nodes lymph nodes in the lymph nodes if you see at the follicular region they are that's why it is named as follicular lymphoma okay and these are not dividing they are indolent type indolent type okay these are indolent type follicular lymphoma are highly occupied at the follicles in the lymph node see if you see just imagine this is a lymph node in the lymph node in the lymph node we have so many follicles inside so this follicular lymphomas are mainly concentrated in the follicles that's why they are named as follicular lymphoma and it is seen due to the translocation of 14th chromosome to the 18th chromosome and with that it causes mutation and it will increase the development okay and it is mostly indolent this its division is very slow this is important uh, type of non hodgkins lymphoma and the third type if we see the third type of non hodgkins lymphoma in third type of non hodgkins lymphoma it is called burkitt's lymphoma very very important burkitt's burkitt's lymphoma lymphoma burkitt's lymphoma very very important we will discuss cases about this burkitt lymphoma has certain clinical features these are highly aggressive these are highly aggressive one important point burkitt's lymphoma are highly aggressive and here this is caused due to the translocation of 8th chromosome to the 14th chromosome important point and it is burkitt's 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 lymphoma is very common to the children another important point and burkitt's lymphoma is mainly associated with ebv virus epstein barr virus another important point and if you see the burkitt's lymphoma on the uh, slide it will be seen like steri sky okay if we at the night if you see the sky we will see some stars at one particular places okay if you see the total total area as dark medium in the dark medium only few stars will be seen that is starry sky starry starry sky type of feature is mainly seen in burkitt's lymphoma i'll show the images in the next slides that i have okay so this is important feature of burkitt's lymphoma and another important feature of burkitt's lymphoma is in african population in african population the burkitt's lymphoma is mainly associated to the lymph nodes lymph nodes of uh, lymph nodes of the neck okay neck region lymph nodes are mainly associated with burkitt's lymphoma in burkitt's lymphoma it is mainly seen in african populations who are Uh, affected mainly to the lymph nodes of neck region with that the neck region is highly uh, the size of the neck increases okay the bulging of neck can be seen and it is mainly characterized by starry sky in the slide and it is associated with epstein barr virus and translocation of 8 and 14 chromosome is seen all these points we have already discussed what is translocation and all and these are highly aggressive and it is mainly seen in children 
and if you see the burkitt lymphoma in the other populations uh, like non african populations it is not seen mainly in the neck it is seen in the other parts of the body mainly in abdominal areas abdominal areas mainly in african populations they are attacking to the neck region and in the other areas burkitt lymphoma attacks to the abdominal region to the other populations this is third type of lymphoma now let us talk about fourth type of non hodgkins lymphoma which is called as mental mental cell lymphoma mental cell lymphoma okay so important clinical features for this mental cell lymphoma or these are aggressive these are aggressive type and here this is seen due to the translocation of 14th chromosome to the 11th one okay and mostly this mental cell lymphomas are mainly characterized by the presence of cd5 positive they are cd5 positive and this mental mental people are very rare this mental cell lymphomas are very rarely seen these are not commonly seen okay so just try to i'll try to tell you see the first one you can see the first b cell lymphoma diffuse large b cell lymphoma this is diffuse large b cell lymphoma is seen like this and the second one if you see follicular see here in the follicular regions in follicular regions it is concentrated here follicles here follicles here follicles in the lymph nodes in the follicles you can see okay and the third image you can see it is uh starry sky you can see starry stars you can see in between stars starry sky type of lymphoma is seen and this is burkitt's lymphoma burkitt lymphoma burkitt lymphoma i told one important point is very common in the children and in if it is affected to the uh, african population you can see the jaw involvement involvement of jaw in the african people okay so this is important clinical feature for uh, burkitt lymphoma and these are highly aggressive i told highly aggressive and translocation of 8th chromosome to the 14th chromosome i told okay and it is also mainly associated with ebv virus okay these are important points you have to remember and you can see this type of uh, uh, this is the another type this is fifth type this is marginal zonal lymphoma marginal zone lymphoma the marginal zone lymphoma these are uh, this fifth type of lymphoma i'll try to explain here the fifth type of non hodgkins lymphoma is marginal marginal zone lymphoma this marginal zone lymphoma these are indolent 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 means they are not rapidly dividing they are very slowly dividing okay and these are common type these are very very common marginal type are very very common very very important clinical feature here for marginal zone lymphoma is they are mainly associated with the mucosal tissue mucosal tissue for example if you till know what we have seen the t cells and b cells are mainly infiltrated to the lymph nodes in the lymph nodes they are rapidly dividing and they'll increase the size of lymph nodes and with that it causes lymphoma here from the lymph nodes sometimes the b cells what they do they will infiltrate to the other tissues mainly and they go and accumulate in the gi tract mucosal layers gi tract mucosal layers and there it damages the mucosal layer and that type of lymphoma is called marginal zone lymphoma which is mainly attacking to the mucosal tissue of the gi tract they will attack to the mucosal tissue of the gi tract okay so uh, the lining of the gi tract is affected here and it causes lymphoma to the affected region this is important clinical feature for marginal zone lymphoma and next other types are some some uh, lymphomas will go and attack to the uh, lymph nodes of the uh, uh, lymphatic tissue they are nodal type particularly the lymph nodes they will accu accumulate only in lymph nodes they are nodal type some will go and accumulate in the spleen they are splenic lymphomas splenic lymphomas okay and few will go and accumulate in the uh, bone marrow okay so that type of lymphomas are lymphoplasmocytic lympho this is important lympho plasmocytic lymphoma lympho plasmocytic lymphoma lymphoma lympho plasmocytic lymphoma are involved to the bone marrow they involve sometimes to the lymph nodes and they involve to the spleen region okay so these are lympho plasmocytic lymphomas very very important important and these are mostly indolent these are mostly in, indolent type so these are different types of non hodgkins lymphoma okay and these are this this all types are b cell till now what we have discussed all these types all these types are b cell uh, lymphomas all these are b cell lymphomas 
all these are b cell lymphomas in b cell lymphomas what we have we have diffuse large b cell lymphoma we have follicular b cell lymphoma we have burkitt's b means b cell burkitt's lymphoma okay we have mental all mental cells are b cells only b cell uh, mental cell lymphoma b mental cell lymphoma which is uh, cd5 positive translocation of 14 and 11 chromosome that we have seen and these are very aggressive so all these are b cell all these are b cell type of lymphomas in previously i told lymphomas can be b or t cell okay so till now what we have discussed all this marginal zonal and uh, splenic lymphoplastic okay uh, lymphoplasmocytic lymphoma all these are types of b cells now let us see yeah so you can see the different types these many types of non hodgkins lymphoma we have i think we have discussed about the b cell lymphomas chronic lymphocytic leukemia uh, we have some hairy cell leukemias also plasma cell neoplasm nodal and extra nodal that marginal type we have just discussed follicular lymphoma we have discussed they are concentrated in follicles mantle cell uh, leukemia uh, lymphomas we have discussed okay mantle cell leukemias are rarest one these we have already seen and diffuse b cell lymphomas are very very common these are very common okay and burkitt's lymphoma also we have already discussed so all these are b cell type of lymphomas and in t cell type of lymphomas also we have so many types in that t cell polymorphic leukemia t cell large granulocyte lymphoma aggressive natural killer cell leukemia chronic lymphoproliferative disorder okay all these are so many types of lymphomas and few precursor lymphoid cell neoplasms are also seen which are already we have discussed uh, other than multiple myeloma and multiple uh, i mean leukemia uh, lymphoid leukemias due to non proliferation of precursor lymphoid cells they also causes lymphoma lymphoma is nothing but the tumor cells or the solid tumors which are entering into the tissues and they will accumulate in the tissue they are lymphoma they are lymphoma so here lymphomas may be leukemia also leukemia can cause lymphoma and lymphoma again can cause leukemia this you have to remember lymphoma is nothing but it is the t cell b cell lymphocytic cells which are accumulated in solid tissues simple lymphoma so here this uh, precursor b cells can accumulate in certain tissues uh, lymphocytes that's why they are called lymphoblastic uh, leukemia or lymphoma precursor t cell lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma okay so we have these many types and yeah if you see the who classification the b cell lymphoma the precursor b cell neoplasms and uh, precursor b cell lymphoblastic leukemia and lymphomas and in mature b cell all this already we have discussed small lympho lymphocytic lymphoma lymphocytic leukemia lymphoplasmocytic leuke uh, lymphoma splenic marginal zone lymphoma extra nodal lymphomas nodal marginal zone lymphoma follicular lymphoma mantle cell lymphoma diffuse large b cell lymphoma mediastinal large b cell uh, lymphoma intravascular large b cell lymphoma primary effusion lymphoma burkitt's lymphoma very very important very very important seen in african populations okay and b cell lymphoma so these are different 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 types of uh, b cell lymphomas and if you see the t cell lymphomas again in t cell lymphomas also we have so many types if we clearly see the t cell lymphomas lymphomas in the t cell lymphomas if we see in t cell t cell lymphomas adult t cell lymphoma is particularly studied this adult t cell lymphoma uh, they are mainly associated with human t cell lymphocytotrophic virus which is called hdlv just now i told in the risk factors hdlv is one virus which is responsible for lymphomas so human t cell lymphocytotrophic virus is mainly associated with adult t cell lymphoma okay so this virus is mainly associated with t lymphomas t cell lymphomas and we have mucosis fungoids mucosis fungoids we have you can see here mucosis fungoids it is cutaneous actually this myco my mucosis fungoids is it is a type of skin uh, lymphoma it is accumulating on the skin on the skin it accumulates and it causes uh, fungus type infection and fungus fungal infection is also skin okay and this type of uh, 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 mucosis fungoids are especially characterized by Shigeri syndrome. Shigeri syndrome is mainly characterized by uh, rashes on the skin. Okay, so these are T, T cell type of lymphomas. Okay, cutaneous anaplastic cell lymphomas or their lymph uh, lymphomatoid papulosis can be seen. Extra nodal also can be seen in extra nodal enteropathy associated T cell lymphoma, hepatosplenic T cell lymphoma, subcutaneous panicutis T, T cell lymphoma. All these are different different types of T cell lymphomas in nodal. If you see and angioimmunoblastic t cell lymphoma anaplastic t cell lymphoma peripheral t cell lymphoma 
okay and leukemic type of t cell lymphomas also can be seen t cell pro lymphocytic leukemia t cell large granulose granular lymphocytic leukemia a aggressive nk cell leukemia and adult t cell leukemia all these are different different types of t cell leukemias are uh, based on their morphology and based on their site of accumulation they are named like this so just not don't confuse all these names we have so many types of non hodgkins lymphoma i think we have discussed different types of non hodgkins lymphoma now let us study the clinical features clinical clinical presentations if you see the clinical presentations of non hodgkins lymphoma the non hodgkins lymphoma clinical presentations are similar to hodgkins lymphoma but here if you see most of them are asymptomatic asymptomatic and few will have fever night sweats okay and uh, weight loss weight loss can be seen and another clinical features for non hodgkins lymphoma see non hodgkins lymphoma they don't have rs cells okay rs cells are not seen okay most of the lymph nodes are non tender non tender and most of the time what happens the uh, non hodgkins lymphoma see non hodgkins lymphoma are non localized they are non localized mainly non hodgkins lymphoma will go and accumulate to the different tissues that's why in non hodgkins lymphoma if you see patient will have lymphomas on the stomach okay stomach tissues are involved bone marrow is involved cns also it is involved and sometimes lungs it will in involve spleen okay and skin also and gi tract gi tract all these different tissues are involved and to identify this type of non hodgkins lymphoma always same like hodgkins lymphoma biopsy is done biopsy is done and the lymph uh, cancerous uh, lymphocytes are examined under the microscope and we can also go with uh, complete blood count in complete blood picture it is uh, all other cells are decreased and uh, lactic dehydrogenase is very very important in most of the non hodgkins lymphoma in non hodgkins lymphoma ldl levels are highly elevated this is the main hallmark for non hodgkins lymphoma and we'll go with chest x ray we'll go with mri mri we'll go with ct also okay because by seeing all this we can see the involvement of lymphomas in different tissues okay so all these uh, clinical presentations are done and here same like non uh, same like hodgkins lymphoma we should not go with uh, fine needle aspiration is not done same like hodgkins lymphoma that you have to remember now if you see the staging staging same like hodgkins lymphoma we have four stages first stage of non hodgkins lymphoma is here the single node single node is involved or because non hodgkins lymphoma is not involved in the nodes but they are involved in the different tissues also so if non hodgkins lymphoma is involved to the single node or to the single site single extra nodal site extra nodal site to the single site they are considered as first stage or uh, first stage of non hodgkins lymphoma and second stage of non hodgkins lymphoma or if they are involved with two nodes two lymph nodes and if they are involved to the two different extra nodal sites they are stage 2 and stage 3 type of non hodgkins lymphoma or those lymphomas which are involved more than two lymphocytes or more than two extra nodal sites but here these are involved on the both the sides of diaphragm okay if you see both the sides of if it is involved on the both the sides of diaphragm both the sides of diaphragm that is third stage and fourth stage already we know okay more than two to three involvement on both the sides of diaphragm and extra uh, tissues i mean the infiltrate into the extra tissues is seen infiltration to the different tissues is seen they are fourth stage okay they are diffuse type they will diffuse from one tissue to other tissues and this is very complicated stage fourth stage is very complicated stage and along with these sub stages also we have we know already a and b a means asymptomatic b means patient will have symptoms if patient is at stage 1 with a then stage a stage 2 with b with with symptoms stage 2 b like that so these stages already we have discussed in hodgkins lymphoma so in non hodgkins lymphoma also we can divide it into different stages okay and uh, yeah now let me tell you the difference between hodgkins lymphoma and non hodgkins lymphoma this is very very important in previous classes in non hodgkins lymphoma what i told in non hodgkins lymphoma mainly b cells are involved and in non sorry in hodgkins lymphoma only b cells are involved and in non hodgkins lymphoma both b cells and t cells b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes are involved next in hodgkins lymphoma mainly reed stenberg cells are very very common okay and in non hodgkins lymphoma there is no presence of reed stenberg cells okay 
and next hodgkin's lymphoma is mainly localized localized but non hodgkin's lymphoma is diffuse type it can be localized but mainly they are diffuse they will be diffusing from one tissue to other tissues okay and non hodgkin's lymphoma can be seen in younger population as well as in the older population but here here also it is seen in younger and older but mainly it is seen in elder population these are different uh, different different features of each hodgkin's lymphoma and non hodgkin's lymphoma always remember hodgkin's lymphoma is specially categorized by the presence of b cells and reed stenberg cells these reed stenberg cells are specialized b cells which are very similar to all i type cells okay in previous class already i explained all i type cells all i type cells okay anyways now if we see the uh, international prognostic index see uh, actually uh, the the stages what we have just discussed the staging stage 1 to 4 that staging is an arbo staging okay an arbo staging when patient is treated with the chemotherapy or with the radiation therapy these are important factors that are that will explain the prognosis of the disease whether the disease will cure or the disease will not be cured okay based on these features only we will uh, categorize whether the patient is in dangerous condition or in the safer zone if patient is at age greater than 60 years the prognosis is very less if the patient is a third and fourth stage prognosis is very very less if patients plasma lactate dehydrogenase just now i told lactate dehy dehydrogenase levels are very high in non hodgkin's lymphoma if it is more than normal level prognosis in these patients are very less number of extranodal sites if extranodal site involvement is more than two if more than two tissues are involved even in these cases also prognosis is very less and if you see the performance status in that cases also prognosis is very less actually this ecog2 ecog is the eastern cooperative oncology group okay so it has certain values it is a scale actually okay, okay in this scale if the value is greater than or equal to 2 if value tries to increase then the prognosis will try to decrease okay that's why if in this scale eastern cooperative oncology group if this scale, in this scale if value is 2 or greater than 2 then prognosis is very less okay now let us try to understand about the management of non hodgkin's lymphoma in non hodgkin's lymphoma always remember the aggressive type the aggressive type of non hodgkin's lymphoma is always sensitive sensitive and in that conditions it is uh, the chemotherapy is very effective and uh, uh, in those cases we can easily cure the patient but in aggressive type of lymphoma cases if chemotherapy is not started that patients will definitely die okay so in aggressive cases treatment prognosis is good and still if treatment is not initiated patient may die patient will have to die this is very important point you have to remember about management okay and uh, yeah if you see the main management uh, treatment strategies see for chemotherapy regimens effective in treatment of non hodgkin's lymphoma we have one two three and four strategies in that first strategy is r chop it is for 21 days this is very important strategy r means here rituximab rituximab is very very important rituximab rituximab is added to the most of the regimens this rituximab has great significance due to the addition of this rituximab most of the cases were cured very easily because rituximab is having good efficacy and one important point we have to remember about rituximab is when rituximab is initiated to the patient we have to check patient's liver function test so liver function test is very very uh, uh, we have to check the patient's liver function test and after that we have to go with rituximab because rituximab is having more uh, uh, probability of causing hepatitis that's why rituximab should be initiated only after performing LFT and if patient has uh, abnormality in liver function test or if patient has uh, hepatitis B or other viral infections hepatitis in that cases rituximab is not suggested because rituximab may adversely affect the liver this is important point we have to remember now see in our 21 day cycle we have c means cyclophosphamide d means doxorubicin h actually in previous classes i told chop chop regimen d uh, actually here h means hydroxydonorubicin it is a doxorubicin and uh, o means oncovin win win christine and p is prednisolone and here r means rituximab so you can see the doses and they are given for 21 cycles okay 21 day cycle so this is one regimen r chop regimen is one regimen and r cvp regimen we have r is 
rituximab and C cyclophosphamide V vincristine, which is oncovin and prednisolone. Okay. And FC 28 day cycle regimen we have. Fludrabine is very, very important drug. We will discuss about this fludrabine also. Fludrabine and cyclophosphamide is one regimen. And CHOP regimen, which is given again for 21 day cycle. Cyclophosphamide, doxorubicin, vincristine, prednisolone. Actually, this CHOP regimen, if this CHOP regimen is not effective, we'll add rituximab. And if patient has hepatitis, here in hepatitis patients, we will not add rituximab directly. We'll go with CHOP therapy. Okay. So these are different strategies. These strategies are very common for different types of non Hodgkin's lymphoma. In most of the all types of non Hodgkin's lymphoma, any of these strategies is followed. And when these regimens are given, always we should try to follow their adverse effects, bone marrow, or all supportive treatments that we'll discuss in upcoming lectures. So these treatment strategies we have for non Hodgkin's lymphoma this is important point we have to remember. See. Actually, for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, same like Hodgkin's lymphoma, we have chemotherapy as well as radiation therapy, depend on the patient's condition. Okay. First, chemotherapy is given. If chemotherapy is not effective, chemo plus radiation therapy is given. If both are not effective or if patient is having, if treatment is failed, we'll go with uh, relapse or uh, we'll go with high-dose therapies. Okay. Salvage therapy, we call salvage high-dose therapy, high-dose therapy. In relapsed indolent non Hodgkin's lymphoma, if patient is having relapsed indolent non Hodgkin's lymphoma, in that cases we have few newer drugs. Newer drugs in patients who have relapsed indolent non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Here, along with rituximab, we have yttrium, yttrium 90 labeled ibri, ibri tumumab, ibri tumumab. Ibritimumab to Cetan, to Cetan, very, very important. Yttrium 90 labeled Ibritimumab to Cetan. This is the novel drug, very, very effective novel drug. It is the newer drug which is given for the patients who are uh, who are relapsed with indolent non Hodgkin's lymphoma, relapsed cases, uh, relapsed with indolent, indolent non Hodgkin's lymphoma. In that cases, this, this newer drug is given along with. Rituximab, okay. So, yttrium 90 labeled Ibritimumab, Tuxitan, you have to remember. In cases, it will come. Okay. So, these are different uh, strategies we have. And uh, see, for salvage chemotherapy, in both Hodgkin's lymphoma and in non Hodgkin's lymphoma, salvage, salvage chemotherapy is the uh, strategies where the initial therapy is when initial therapy fails. Okay. In that cases, salvage therapies we go. Actually, these are high doses salvage therapies. We have DAP regimen, okay. We have ESAP regimen, we have IC regimen, IV regimen. These are given for salvage, okay. In the DAP regimen, we have cisplatin, citrabin, and dexamethasone. And ESAP regimen, we have etoposite, methylprednisolone, citrabin, and cisplatin. And in ICE regimen, iphosphamide, carboplatin, and etoposite. And in IV regimen, epirubicin, etoposite, and iphosphamide. So these are given for salvage chemotherapy conditions. And if you see the typical uh, flow chart for uh, treating non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, see in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, particularly we have low grade, low grade type of uh, uh, lymphomas or those lymphomas where patient will have indolent. Okay, patient is indolent where the division is very low. The low division cases are indolent cases and intermediate high grade cases are those cases which are aggressive they are very aggressive and aggressive so in these cases if patient is at low grade and if patient is at first and second stage or third and fourth stage in that cases radical uh, radiotherapy is given and uh, if patient is given with radiotherapy relapse can be seen and in stage three and four patients if patient is having symptoms will go with chemotherapy if asymptomatic will go will will watch if patient has symptom again will go with chemotherapy and in chemotherapy if patient is treated well then it's okay if it is relapsed Again, we'll go with second line chemotherapy, okay, relapsed therapy. And in intermediate type, aggressive type of uh, cancers, here we have stage one and stage uh, one, two, and two, three, uh, uh, sorry, three, four. In stage one and two cases, short course combination chemotherapy is given involved with radiation therapy. If relapse or no relapse is seen, salvage chemotherapy is added. If salvage therapy is good, then we'll continue. If it is not responding, then palliative therapy is given. Palliative therapy means again, we'll go with the symptomatic treatment, okay. So these are different uh, strategies, flowcharts for treating non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, see, actually, if patient is given with bone marrow 
transplantation in bone marrow transplantation the stem cell transplantation in that cases we will go with conditioning chemotherapy this is very very important conditioning chemotherapy is the uh, treatment which is given just prior to bone marrow transplantation or prior to the transplantation or reinfusion of stem cells bone marrow transplantation is nothing but the transplantation or the infusion of stem cells to the body so before sending uh, stem cell reinfusion we will go with two strategies one is beam strategy and one is lace strategy beam strategy contains carmastin etoposide cetrabine melphalan these four drugs with these particular doses are given for six days actually car carmastin is given for six days prior to the stem cell infusion okay on the on the uh, day zero we will go with the stem cell but before that six days before to the infusion of stem cells we will go with uh, carmastin six days five to two days uh, we'll go with etoposide five to two days citrabine and last one day we'll go with melphalan so all these are beam strategies and in lace strategies again we have lomastin etoposide and citrabine these are given uh, for seven days seven days and six to five days before infusion is given and cyclophosphamide is given four to two days prior to the infusion of uh, stem cells so these are beam and lace strategies which is given just before the infusion of these are different strategies we have and now let us try to see about the supportive care in supportive care see when chemotherapy is given patient will have nausea vomiting patient will have diarrhea so in that cases we'll go with the anti diarrheal drugs or anti emetic drugs and all so in some cases where cytotoxic drugs are given patient will develop tumor lytic syndrome when when tumors are broken down when tumors are broken down more neoplastic cells are destroyed when these tumor cells are destroyed it will produce more amount of metabolites in that particularly more amount of uric acid is synthesized so when uric acid is synthesized patient will have hyperuricemia uricemia and due to elevated uh, uric acid in the body it may cause it may cause nephrogenic to nephrotoxicity it can cause urate nephro nephropathy which is called urate nephropathy nephropathy kidney can be damaged with hyperuricemia patient will have hyperkalemia patient will have less amount of calcium hypocalcemia can be seen so okay, all in all these conditions in hyperuricemic conditions we have uh drugs like allopurinol we have febuxostat and especially remember if patient is having tumor lysis syndrome if patient has tumor lysis syndrome here we have rasburicase rasburicase is the drug okay rasburicase is very important drug that is given for tumor lysis syndrome and along with this uh, patient will have mucositis patient will have mucositis 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 very very important mucositis is the adverse effect actually what happens the all epithelial cells in the mouth epithelial cells in the GI tract they will be destroyed when mu epithelial mucosal layers are destroyed it will cause ulcer formation ulcer formation that is called mucositis in these conditions if particularly in mouth if ulcers are seen we'll go with uh, mouth washes okay so that can be seen and sometimes bone marrow suppression can be seen bone marrow suppression can be seen in that patient will have pancytopenia febrile febrile neutropenia can be seen in that cases high uh, antibiotics are given to stop the uh, infections particularly in nosocomial infections we go with uh, antibiotics okay in pancytopenia again we'll go with the blood transfusion in blood transfusion can be done and some growth factors also can be given to increase the synthesis of cells especially after uh, giving bone marrow transplantation okay so these are different uh, strategies we follow in treating non hodgkins lymphoma i think you all understood basic things about non hodgkins lymphoma their types okay and uh, hey non hodgkins lymphoma first of all it is a very confusing topic so i tried a lot to make you understand the different types of non hodgkins lymphoma okay uh, keep uh, uh, just watch it twice and thrice just to understand the names and their types and in treatment strategies based on their type the treatment strategies we will follow for all non hodgkins lymphoma type of lymph uh, lymphomas okay so that's it for today uh, thank you all for uh, watching this video we'll continue with the clinical cases in the next class okay clinical cases in the next class till then bye bye